The Christian life is very simple. The challenge in the Christian life is in the practice. But the principles surrounding Christian living is very simple and very basic. That if we will learn to practice them, after a time, it becomes habitual for us to do those things. Now when you hear that somebody tells you of how he or she prays extensively, continuously, you may think that it is something that is unattainable because maybe you have tried, it's like it's not working for you like that. But the truth is that life is all about habits. It's all about habits. If you can just set out a time and you are able to keep to that time consistently for over 14 times, and you're able to continue like that for up to 60 days, what you have done is that you have formed a habit. It becomes strange if you don't do it. It becomes a habit. That it becomes strange if you are not able to find time to give yourself to that time of prayers. And it's not only in prayers. It's in every area of life. Life is about habit. And that's why you see some men, they go into marriage. Even though they love their wives, even though they love their families, their children, they are still immoral, sexually unfaithful to their wives, because of the bad habits they learned growing up as teenagers in their 20s and maybe in their 30s, it is just a bad habit. They themselves know that what they are doing is wrong. But a bad habit has taken over them. They now look as though it's normal. But there's nothing normal in it. Nothing normal. It's just like somebody that you used to smoke. You tell that I cannot stay without bars. I cannot stay without smoking. It's not true. It's just that the person has learned a habit and is under the power of nicotine, which is destroying his life every single moment he takes a, a stick of cigarette. He's destroying his health and making himself or herself vulnerable to terminal illnesses. I've seen medical doctors who smoke. And I wonder upon all the things they have learned, all the truths they learned, or they have learned about the danger of nicotine and cigarette, why will a medical doctor still smoke? It's a habit. And once these habits are taken over by demonic spirits, people find themselves in bondage. And so for bad habits, the cure is to run to Jesus. Hallelujah. And begin to apply the principles of God's word into your life. Those habits will die. However, the reason why I talked about habit is because of what we are saying here today. The Christian life is very simple. The principles are very simple. The issue, the challenge is in the practice. For example, the Bible says, Give thanks to God in all things, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. That is a simple instruction. It's very simple. And so if you can learn to practice rejoicing and keep yourself in a state of joy consistently, no matter what is happening in your life, if you can do that consistently over a long period of time, it becomes habitual for you to always rejoice in the face of anything. 
not as though you are rejoicing that that thing is happening, but you are rejoicing because you know the victory is already yours. That is why the God, uh, as I had said to the barren woman, that she rejoiced. Sing, O barren, that that is not bare. And he tells her the reason why she sing, why she shout aloud. He said, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife. And so when we are practicing rejoicing, for example, we are not rejoicing that something bad is happening or has happened. We are rejoicing in the victory that we have in the face of what has happened and or in the face of what is happening. We see the victory for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife. And so practicing God's word is very important. The life of faith is all about practice and habit. Some Christians think that the great men of God that you hear of, that you don't have issues in their life. <laughs> I heard Josmias explaining that they have greater challenges. But because they already know how to deal with challenges, when those challenges come, they deal with it, it's like nothing has happened. They've learned through the years. I went for a crusade in Benin City at Oakbury Stadium. The man of God that came to preach in that crusade and the miracles in that crusade was sick. He himself was sick. I don't want to mention his name. And he mentioned it. And said that if he needed to be brought in a stretcher, that he would have entered the stretcher, they would bring him to the to Benin for the crusade. He was having challenge in his own health. But he knows that the way to conquer that challenge is not to stay back, is to act in faith. That doesn't mean he was careless with his life or with his body, but he knew where the answer is. Hallelujah. So, it is all right to admire people. It is all right to have people you look up to. The Bible teaches that we should look up to those who lead us, who teach us the word of God. There's nothing wrong with that. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. But you have to realize that those men and women you are looking up to, they go there through practice. Through practice. Through practicing the Christian life. Those of them you see with supernatural manifestation, they go there through practicing the supernatural. There is no Christian that does not have the ability to walk in the supernatural. Jesus himself said to us in Mark, he said, and these signs shall follow them that believe. These signs shall follow them that believe. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall place their hands on the sick. The sick shall recover. They shall take up serpents. It will not hurt. They shall drink. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. If, if means is conditional. If by a French or mistakenly, you touch something that is deadly, you didn't know, but I shall not hurt you. So the point is this. There is no Christian for, that cannot manifest supernatural. But how far you go in supernatural manifestation is determined by habit. Is determined by practice. 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 So you practice it and you start getting results little by little. At times you may have some failings but you keep practicing. You keep practicing because you believe the word of God is true. You keep practicing. After a time, it becomes habitual. You see a lame person, you know the lame will walk because you now have the habit of walking supernatural. Life is about habit. And habits are formed through consistent practicing. Or through consistent practice. Hallelujah. Even your career, 
the job you do. If you have done one job consistently for years, of course, if you become proficient in it. I've been in a class where a professor was teaching, took us in a course, religion and human value. This elderly man, professor of religious studies, he doesn't bring notes, notebook or textbook to class. He comes down and sits down in one place quietly and everything is pouring from his head. So this man teaches in such a way that you can write a textbook from the way he talks. Very calm, very slow and he's making his point that you the student can write in a textbook from his teaching. How did that happen? Through the years. Practice became habitual. So he teaches now by habit. Hallelujah. 